Hi. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about libdweb, which is a library for Firefox to mm. enable web extensions to do P2P stuff more easily. Um, so it allows uh, IPFS to do things that it wouldn't normally be able to do in the browser. So in the browser, it's quite difficult to be to actually talk to um, other other uh, IPFS nodes running in other browsers, maybe on the local network or externally. Um, one of the things that uh, JS IPFS will do if it's running in a, a node environment, for instance, it will use like MDNS to discover services on the local network. Um, and unfortunately, browsers don't have like an API for MDNS, so it like JS IPFS can't discover. Um, nodes on the local network in that way. What it has to do is use uh, some kind of bootstrap nodes uh, and rendezvous points to uh, talk to other nodes. And the other tricky thing is that if, even if I could discover a node on the network, uh, how would I talk to it? There's no, there's no like address or port that it's bound to or can, can bind to um, that I can communicate over. Um, so what libdweb does is uh, it allows you to um, create uh, TCP sockets or listen on TCP sockets. Um, and uh, so you can connect, also listen um, and talk, but also it, you, it, um, it gives you the ability to make, uh, to use MDNS via its service discovery API, which is kind of rad. So what I've done is uh, in the IPFS companion um, web extension, uh, which is a web extension that you can get for Firefox and Chrome. Um, you can install it in your browser and it allows you to talk to, um, or yeah, talk to like a, a, a node, a daemon running locally on your machine, or it can um, allow you to talk to a, a JS node embedding, uh, embedded directly in the web extension. Um, and that's kind of cool because if the JS node is running in the web extension and libdweb is providing these APIs, then potentially the node running in your web extension can uh, discover services on the local network, uh, expose a port to connect to and talk to them um, and have them talk back to them. So uh, the other cool thing is that IPFS Companion adds a property to the window object of every web page you visit called window.ipfs, which is a proxy to the, the node that's running in the Companion, which means that your web pages can talk to other web pages on other computers, on other browsers running on the local network, uh, as if it was a JS IPFS node running uh, in a Node.js environment. Uh, so this is super exciting, um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how how it's been done. So over here, it's uh, this is the source code for IPFS Companion, and um, here we're looking at the uh, the init function for an embedded node. And what what I've done is I've created two uh, modules. So they're libp2p modules, which is the uh, kind of peer-to-peer -peer aspect of uh, IPFS, which has been pulled out as a separate library which you can use in your own apps, but it's used primarily by IPFS. Um, and what, uh, what libp2p does is it allows you to uh, customize the modules that you use for discovery and transport. The idea is that you can have multiple modules for discovery. Um, you can have multiple methods. Uh, MDNS is one, um, and multiple types of transport. Like in here, here we're going to be using the TCP transport. But like typically in the browser, you might use like a WebSocket transport or, or whatever. So there's two new modules called Web Extension MDNS and Web Extension TCP. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're taking our IPFS options, which uh, you'll see are 
passed from uh, the IKFS companion options page and we're extending them and adding in these uh, these modules so actually what when we're when I say adding in we're actually replacing uh, so there's no other discovery modules available in this node so um, there's no typically there'll be like a bootstrap discovery module which has a list of kind of open uh, nodes available to everyone to connect to um, uh, and that, it, the, it, that will allow um, the JS IPFS node to just connect to them. Uh, but what we're doing is we're taking that away, uh, as well as any other discovery methods that are there, and replacing it just with our MDNS uh, uh, discovery module. And the MDNS discovery module, what that's doing in the background is using the libdweb uh, service discovery uh, API to uh, make MDNS requests and discover other, other services on the local network. And then once the services have been discovered, we can use this TCP transport to uh, talk to them. Um, and so this, what this does is this removes any other transports that, were, that are usually available in the browser for, um, for IPFS and replaces it with just this web extension TCP transport, which uh, uses libdweb's TCP socket API to talk to other nodes. So lots of words. Let's see the demo. Uh, so I, I can start up Firefox Nightly here, and this is should be easier in the future. <laughs> um, but this enables the libd web extensions in my browser and opens up, uh, opens it up with the browser console open and the IPFS companion uh, plugging running. Um, so here we go. That just needs to get out of the way. Great. Um, and so I don't have a local uh, daemon running, so it, it defaults to uh, trying to connect to an external, like a daemon that's running on my computer. So this could be a Go IPFS daemon or it could be a JS IPFS daemon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this over to embedded. And then you'll see the IPFS node config uh, section. And by default, we can't listen on any addresses. Uh, because we're in the browser, there's no we can't usually bind to any port, ports. Uh, but because we are in the browser uh, and we are, have libdweb enabled, we can um, specify an address that we're going to listen on for um, for connections to to the swarm. Uh, so we just need to know what our IP address is. Our IP address is 1.170, so 192.168.1.170. Uh, and we specify a TCP port, which can be anything, but it's usually 5,000 and something. I'm going to pick 5,004. It doesn't matter what this port is or what this address is at all, really, um, because it's going to be a net. We're going to announce it over MDNS to the network. and. So people will find out what the addresses, addresses that they should be connecting to. So anyway, once I've done that, uh, here we go. So it should hopefully start up. We've got zero, and that means I've got zero connected peers. So that's, uh, that's, not, that's not super good. Uh, but here we go, let's have a look. So what's happened here? Let's get scroll to the interesting part. Let's filter out some warnings. Do -do. So here we go, embedded IPFS init. So here we go, we've got lots of logs coming in here, but what we're looking for, is, so we've got web extension TCP listener, we're listening on that IP address and that port that we specified, and then our web extension MDNS service starts up and I announce, announce my, uh, my uh, address that I'm listening on to the network, so that's cool. Uh, and then the M web extension MDNS discovers, I discover myself, there, so I'm. I'm got all of these addresses that I'm currently available on, um, but this is me, uh, and I'm here. So I discovered myself three times for some reason. No idea why. Um, and then that's all that happened. So that's cool. That's cool. But that's uh, not. We've not connected to anyone. We haven't talked to anyone. If we flip over here. We've got another machine here, Ubuntu machine, um, and we can do the same thing here. We can run Firefox with libd web enabled and the companion web extension installed. And our 
uh, our new transport and discovery modules enabled. So we do the same thing here. We just need to open up the settings. Here we go. So uh, gateway, here we go. No, that's it. We want to flip to embedded mode and we need to add our IP address here. Let's have a quick look. Uh, so 10. Let's copy that. Swan, here we go. IP4, and then our address, TCP, and we can pick a number 5005. Why not? So let's close that. So at the moment, we've got zero peers. Hopefully, this should. One pair, okay, cool. So let's have a quick look at what happens there. Da, 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 da. In the browser console for this one, um, wow, stuff happened. Lots of things happened. Let's just filter out those warnings. Okay, wow, 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 wow. So embedded IPFS in it, here we are. So, da, 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 da. wow, okay. So we started listening on 5005. Uh, we announced to the network that we were here. Uh, and then discovery started, the MDNS uh, discovery started uh, and found a service. So this is me. I am, this is, this is my address. So that's, that's all great. Uh, but then, then, so it found, uh, it found me. Uh, so it found other me. <laughs> <laughs> found me back on my MacBook Pro, um, so that's rad. And then it's uh, so IV IV. It started dialing IV, and then it did some stuff. Dial 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 uh, successes. And then look, we di we dialed. We wrote some buffers. We read some buffers. Read and write. Read and write. Read and write. We did some sec IO stuff. Finish writing exchange. Finish verify. Blah blah. blah finish start. Great. So we're all we're all kind of done. And I, if I go back over to here, this one should also have one one peer. Amazing. Um, so if I'm super super lucky, I should be able to now um, go to ipfs.io. Um, here we go. It doesn't matter what website I go to, but if I open up the console, I can now use the feature that web, uh, IPFS Companion adds uh, to the window object, window.ipfs. Yep, that's there, that's great, ipfs.add. Uh, and let's make sure that this thing hasn't got this. So this is test, and uh, I'm going to do date. Oh, no. Yep, date dot now okay so no one will have added that that uh, that data surely uh, and I need to put it in a buffer uh, and I'm just going to log out the result so that I can get the hash so yeah, so of course there's a feature of Companion which allows me, which means that not anyone can just use your your local IPFS. It's got um, some kind of security in place, to, so you have to allow people the ability to do things. And so anyway, this succeeded. I added it to my local IPFS. That's great. So I can copy. I should be able to copy this hash as PQCIN, um, and then head on back over to here. Uh, not now. IPFS.io. Here we go. And then if I open the browser console, I should be able to, if I'm lucky, IPFS. Is it there? Yes. Uh, IPFS.cat. Uh, here we go, and we should get potentially an error, but we're interested in the data, which is a buffer. So we're just going to two string that data, uh, and if if this works, we should get a string with uh, the 
word test in capital letters followed by a whole bunch of numbers printed to the browser and there it is Wah! Uh, so that's that's it. That is two IPFS nodes running in web extensions, talking to each other over the local network, talking to each other and finding each other in the first place um, without any intervention from myself. Ah, so awesome.